Hi folks, welcome back. One last video from the section 5.3. This is, uh, I really do think this is the last one, and it is going to be about the power reducing formulas. Uh, so where in the world do these things come from? Well, oh, there we go. If you take a look at the double angle formulas, specifically the double angle formulas for cosine of 2 theta, you'll notice some things. Uh, there is one equivalent form that cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and a second equivalent form that cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And somewhere at some point, some smart folks said, well, guess what? If those are equal, uh, most of the time we use this to find cosine of 2 theta. But we could probably use this to find sine squared theta and specifically notice that like in that case the uh, power goes away there's no exponent now the power kind of goes somewhere else right it, is, it still makes the expression complicated uh so they took this and solved it backwards and said okay cosine of 2 theta minus 1 is negative 2 sine squared theta divide by negative 2 and we get that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, right? The negative 2 switches the order of those terms. And similarly, you could do the same with the uh, identity that's solved for cosine squared. And you could get this. So this is basically taking the cosine of 2 theta identity, solving uh, using one of these two forms, and then solving it for cosine squared or sine squared. And then finally, we could take these two and put them on top of each other and do, okay, ooh, sine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 over 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Reduce that. What do you get? The identity for tangent squared theta. And so these are the power reducer identities. What do they do? They reduce your power. They reduce your exponent. There are times in calculus where you have an exponent. You have a trig function. You're trying to do something with it, and you have an exponent, and you need that exponent to go away. But here is the big warning. Only use the power reducers when you have nothing else to use or you're directed to do so by the problem. Every time I teach students these power reducing formulas, they use them in every problem that they see a sine squared or a cosine squared, they say, oh my gosh, I've got to reduce that power. Guess what? It's never the right choice. You almost never want to use the power reducers. Some things you should try before attempting to power reduce, good old Pythagorean identities, sine squared plus cosine squared, uh, x, x equals one. That's almost always a better substitution or plain old factoring, right? Maybe you have a sine squared x, Maybe the solution is write it as sine x sine x, um, along with whatever else is going on in the problem. Almost never do you want to use those power reducers. But if you do, or if the problem tells you to, here's how you do it. So this is one from the homework, and the direction is really explicit. It says rewrite with only first powers of x. And what do we have right here? Well, we have a cosine to the fourth of x. Okay. So this is a situation where it is appropriate to use the power reducing identity. I have a cosine. I have a cosine to the fourth. I need the identity for cosine squared. So I'm going to think about this as 10 cosine squared x squared. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, the other reason I don't recommend the power reducers is these get really messy really fast. And you're about to see why. So here we go. 10, 1 plus cosine of 2x. So every time you reduce the power over 2, you kind of increase the uh, coefficient on x, or the coefficient inside the argument. So it's not just a free power reduction. You, you sacrifice the power reduction for the, um, you know, increasing the number inside. And, you know, that actually usually makes things harder. All right, so that 10 is going to stay there. But guess what? You have to FOIL this out. 
So this is going to be it's going to be over 4 because 2 squared is 4 and then it's going to be 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine of 2x quantity squared which we'll write as cosine squared 2x all over 4 okay so we could bring out this 10 over 4 and then mark this as 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared 2x all right we're done right we've used the power reducer identity okay cool problem over wait no because that's a cosine squared and our job was to write with only first powers of x so guess what we need to use the power reducer identity again so i'm going to take this and do it again now here when i use it a second time the role of theta is taken like the theta that you see in the identity is taken by the term 2x because the theta just refers to like whatever's in the argument so this part of the identity i'll just do this part separately and then i'll, I'll rewrite the rest in is going to simplify to 1 plus cosine of 2 times 2x right 2x takes the role of theta but you still have this 2 from the identity uh, and then that's over 2 and you could write that as 4x and then we still have 10 over 4 which I'm going to reduce to 5 over 2 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus and that's it now you're actually done with the problem I'm going to do one last step and simplify things down but you can see why the power reducer identities are so gross now uh, let's see so this is actually one half I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do that. So I've got a 5 over 2 times 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus 1 half plus uh, cosine 4x all over 2. And then maybe like one last step is we could group the one half and the one together so that's three halves and then I could bring the five halves in so it looks like this might be 15 over 4 plus 5 cosine 2x that's the 5 over 2 coming in plus 5 cosine of 4x all over 4 don't get and then stop here don't get excited and do something stupid like trying to cancel fours doesn't work that 4x is part of the argument don't do it something like this is probably as good as this gets um, and you have lost a lot right you started with something really simple cosine to the fourth and you've ended with something very complicated the only thing you've really gained is uh, the elimination of all the exponents so if you have to eliminate exponents this is what you can do this is your step would i recommend it unless the problem tells you to no it's just something that you know sometimes you do have to do but it gets really messy really fast okay let's do another one uh, so i have eight sine squared x cosine squared x so the eight is just going to hang out in the front like a constant but sine squared x i need to write as one minus cosine of two x over 2 and cosine squared x I need to write as 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 so I'm substituting in using the two identities now I'm gonna to have to foil this out again 8 times 2 times 2 is 4 okay now here's something cool is happening I have a uh, you know binomial right I have an uh, uh, quadratic so this is actually going to be 1 minus cosine squared of 2x and at this point I could even be real smart and say hey that's 8 over 4 uh, reduces out to, to 2 
So this is just really 2 minus 2 cosine squared of 2x. And I'd say, aha, all right, I'm done. Mr. Eck, why'd you say this problem was so bad? Well, because the you're not done. The problem said, rewrite with only first powers. And I thought I was done until I multiplied them out, and I ended up with a cosine squared again. So I'm going to have to do this again to reduce the degree down one more. Actually, let's talk about that for a second. If you think about this as a polynomial, we have a degree of 4, a total degree, because we have a sine squared and a cosine squared. When we reduce the powers, we reduce the degree down to 2, but we're going to have to reduce it again. And so it's just like every time you use a power reducer, you can reduce the degree by 1. We use two power reducers, so we reduce the degree by 2. But we haven't yet used our... Our, our next set of power reducers. So I have a cosine squared 2x again, and just like before, the role of theta in the identity is being played by 2x, so then this is going to be equivalent to 2 minus 2, 1 plus cosine of 4x, because it's 2 times 2x, over 2, now that's pretty nice because the 2's will cancel out, and you should get 2 minus 1 plus cosine 4x, which is going to be 1 minus cosine of 4x as a simplified final answer. So it is pretty cool how sometimes these simplify down really nicely. There we go. But other times they don't. And you have to do a lot of algebra to do it. And you, honestly, the biggest problem is people screw up their fractions. There's a lot of fractions in here and a lot of distributing and a lot of factoring. So if you're going to use the power reducers and you have no other choice, go ahead. But please use them correctly. That's my, my main ask for you guys. Um, so those are the power reducing formulas. I believe this is the last set of formulas in section 5.3 that you're going to need to know. Uh, I definitely don't need you to memorize the power reducing formulas. It's nice to know they're out there. You're probably going to use them in calculus once or twice to derive some other stuff. But most of the time, the plain old double angle formulas are all you need. And that's what I'd recommend sticking with. But I think you are going to see these a couple times on your homework. So anyway, as always, email me with your questions. Post your questions in the comments. I'll reply to them as soon as I can. Um, and I'll see you in class. Have a nice day.